Hello, welcome. I know we're going to do the handlebars this week, but I thought I'd just share a few thoughts about what we did with the tail last week. So I've had some time to think about that. And um, I'm still happy with it, but I thought I'd share some more thoughts anyway and do a little comparison for you. So we'll just spend a few minutes on that and then we'll get started on the handlebars. So I hope you've had a great week and I hope you enjoy this. Well, this is how we left it last week. We've got the rear lights, indicators, all the grills, the mock-up of the number plate, which I've ordered now, so that should come in the next couple of days, and the rear rack that we've been playing with. And my mind has sort of got used to how it looks now, because it was a bit strange before when we added everything. But I just thought, I'd just share a couple more thoughts on some alternatives. And first of all, just have a look at it without that rear rack in place. So that's without the rack. And let's go back to the rack. And that's without the rack again. So you can see the sort of visual difference you get. Now when the rack is on, I really like how that looks. It sort of looks quite integrated and all together. But with the rack off, the way the light sticks up is just, it's okay, but it's a bit of a distraction, the way it just sticks up. So with the rack off, I'm not quite as sure, but with on, I think it's perfect. But as an alternative, instead of doing this, I've seen some lights on eBay, which would fit without this here, would fit underneath here, so they'd sort of peep out below here. No, but where does that leave you with indicators? So, but then I've also seen lights go under here and have indicators built in, which seems a bit sketchy, but I'll put a picture up of what that looks like. And you still have to find a way to mount the number plate. So rack off, I'm not so keen on that sticking up. But rack on, I really like it. So I um, might just leave the rack on. But um, you might look at that alternative or you might not. Or as I remembered, you can also get these with integrated stop tail lights. So I might have a look at that. But at the moment, with that rack, I'm pretty much sold on that. But um, that was my thoughts on how that went anyway. And, uh, but yeah, let's just put that rack back on. And we'll leave it like that for now, I think. And that was the back. Thanks for all your comments and ideas on that as well. That was um, always great to hear. Now, let's move on to this week's mission. Also, before I forget, there was a couple of people have asked about the classic 350 seat and using the original Meteor subframe. So I'll just show you the uh, implications of that won't take a minute. So as you've seen from previous videos, classic 350 seat, classic 350 seat mounting bracket, which you have to source. Because if you buy a classic 350 seat, that bracket won't come with it. I was lucky to find it on eBay, but um, I'm not sure where you'd find it otherwise. And that slides over these two holes. If I get the Meteor 350 subframe, you can see that also goes over those back two holes. And there wouldn't be enough room for both, typically. But if I have a look at that rack, this is how that rack fits. All it is, is this distance is wider so that when the rack goes on, there's a gap either side of the spine so that bracket can slide down. So if you want to use a classic 350 seat bracket and a Meteor subframe, all you have to do is cut that 
cut those tubes wider to make them the same as that. And then you'll be able to get the bra both brackets on. So if I get my tape measure, the Meteor subframe bracket, distance between the tubes is 90 millimeters. And on that rack is about 98 millimeters. So on your Meteor subframe, just need to cut four millimeters off those tubes. Just cut four millimeters there, four millimeters there. That's a little less than a quarter of an inch. That's it. And that would be reversible as well, because it's almost four millimeters aside is nothing. And if you wanted to go back, you could always just put a couple of washers in. And you would have these bolts kind of visible, but not very visible. The pillion pad would hopefully, if you're having a pillion with you, classic 350 seat. But have a look at the previous episodes, especially the seat episode, episode two or three maybe. Two, I think. And that will make the seat thing a lot clearer. So I hope that helps. Just for a recap, in case you haven't seen a meteor before, these are the standard bars. So usual left hand grip, left hand switch gear, clutch perch, quite a high rise bar, rise of about four inches there. Clamps, then the clutch uh, brake lever perch, cylinder, right hand switch gear and twist grip. And you've got, I wouldn't call them weights. They are probably weights. We'll find out in a minute. Screwed into the end. Very typical sort of a arrangement. If you see from the front, you can see it's got quite a high rise, which makes it a very comfortable cruiser, especially as the seat. You're usually sat further back. Now these are the bars I want to try. And as you can see, if I hold them there, obviously it's a bit hard to tell because they're not in the same place, but they're not bent back as far. I think that's called sweep. And they definitely haven't got such a rise on them. So they look lower. And are they wider? Yeah, and there. So I've lined up that side. So they're this much wider. These are only about £20. They're just sort of generic handlebars on eBay. I think I searched trail bike or scrambler bars, possibly. And these aren't bent steel, these are bent alloy. Which you can tell by the thicker wall. And they've got quite a nice... I think it's sometimes called a shot peened finish. So it's not paint, it's, uh, it's anodized on. You can see a bit there to come off. So I'm really interested to try these bars out. Now probably the biggest challenge I'm expecting is the Meteor, like a lot of Royal Enfields, is meant for maneuverability and they've got a much bigger turning lock than most motorcycles. See, most motorcycles might stop about there, and that'd be considered sort of normal. But the Enfields, because they're... Look at that, that steering lock. Look how tight that is. And that leaves you with this, not issue, but um, feature, where the bars do get really close to the tank go the other way. Obviously, so with these bars being lower, it's almost impossible to tell what's going to happen. But as you've guessed it, we're going to find out really shortly. 
So let's take these bars off and try these ones on. What have you got there? Typical arrangement, full cap head, Allen bolts. Right. Off you come. So four Allen bolts. Pretty tight, so they probably haven't been off since the bike was made. Just got to be careful when you release the last ones in case it spins down and dents the tank. Just rest that against my body. There's one cap. Just have a quick look in case it matters which way around they go. Because you'll often see a dot on one side. But no, can't see any distinguishing features on there at all. Okay, two clamps. Now, I'm not a complete Philistine, so I've got a towel here to try and protect the bike from the handlebars, or the other way around. So let's just pull these ties off. Nice little reusable rubber ties. Better than zip ties, or cable ties, whatever you call them. Now, have I got enough flex just to roll them over the front? Uh, not much, no. And I think that's mostly due to the clutch lever. Clutch cable, rather. Oh, there we go. Is my brake fluid going to leak out if I do that? Possibly. Although it shouldn't. But it might. We'll keep an eye on it, it'll only be for a minute. So, there's the clamps off. Standard 22 mil bars, seven eighths of an inch, I think. Weirdly, something I've never seen on the bike before. The risers have got this bridge, this alloy bridge that connects the two. I've never seen that before. I wonder if that's for just general rigidity. Also, something you should see is these risers, as they're called, they're actually curved back. And they're not universally, they're not equal either side. So the axis of the bars is actually behind the mounting axis by about 15 mil maybe. Which means if we do get a clearance problem, we might be able to turn this round and force the handlebars out this way a bit. I don't know if that will compromise working the key. Although I don't know a lot at this stage. So, um, but let's get the bars in there. So cool, these serrated parts on these bars, luckily falling within the same place as these ones. It wouldn't be a disaster if they're not. But it's nice that it won't show out. Oh my God, they look low. Look at that. Can you see that? It's like the... <laughs> That's kind of what it was like before. They look really low. Right, let's pop a clamp on. Clamp on.
Wow, that's really low. Can you see that? Look at that. They've gone down a long way. I can't imagine there's any way that they're not going to hit the tank. Let's have a look. I also have to be really careful because I don't want to damage anything. Crikey, they're all the way down there. This rise, it looks like it's only got about a one inch rise. Uh, oh, okay. Right, they don't hit, but obviously the controls aren't on. So that doesn't mean anything at the moment. Okay, that's a quick first impression together. <laughs> They're very low. They were up here before. Now they're right down in there. Now at the moment on lock, I've got about an inch, 25 mil, before it hits the tank. And I think if I want to put the controls on, it's going to hit the tank, but I've got ideas for that. So don't worry. Obviously it's a bit hard to tell because of all this stuff going on. If I try and blank that out. This is, I think this is gonna be good. Let's have a sit on it. Okay, here we go. Now, is anything gonna collapse? Because I haven't sat on it for a while. Mm -hmm. There's so much that I haven't bolted up like that so before we were here and now we're here well it feels quite aggressive now is it too low no it's not too low I'll see I'm on the center stand so it's all a bit weird anyway Feels meaner. Set it up here. So as well as the lower rise, I'm sure these are also bending instead of the meteor patch kicks up. It's also bending down. Oh, where's that spanner gone? Yeah, it's a bit more comfortable. Right, now how much room does that give us? Oh, but quite a bit more now. So we've got about an inch here. But out where the controls are, about an inch and a half. And out, right out here, we've got quite a bit of clearance. So nothing mounts here. The mounting starts about here. Right, we're definitely gonna be trying this out anyway. So there's the meteor bars sat just in front of the, uh, the bars I've just bought so you can see the difference in the rise. So we're gonna start dismantling. God, that's tight. I knew it started to come undone. The job, not the screw. Four. 
Must be some Loctite in there. Certainly some adhesive. Is that a weight? Yeah, that's a weight. That's pretty weighty. Won't be able to use these again though. Because there's no threads in that alloy bar, of course. Right, is this a two-piece clutch perch? No. It's the clamp type. So this grip has to come off which all depends on how well it was glued on. Mm. I'm optimistic about getting it off, but I'm not sure it'll be easy. Let me just get a thin screwdriver to slide up the inside. Basically, I'm just hoping to break the glue seal all the way around. And I think the glue seal will be good. Come on. See, that wouldn't give me, let me have my screwdriver back. Your fight. I'm only getting about two thirds of the way to the front, so I'm hoping. I've heard of all sorts of tricks with compressed air and whatnot, so we might try that in a minute. I can't see any glue down here. I'm hoping it'll be one of those things that once it starts moving, it'll keep moving. So it'd be a shame to lose these grips, because they're quite nice grips, quite cushioned. Right, I think I'm going to try and take this switch gear off to give me some purchase. Two screws, as usual. Come on. Oh, 
How long can it be? More like it. Well, this will leave the cam off or it won't. Okay, so long one was at the front of the bike. Now this is going to be wired to the clutch at some point, but for the clutch sensor. Oh no, it's not. It's got its own cable for the clutch switch. And it looks like that's integrated with the USB power supply. There's a little USB socket under there. So the switch gear just clamped around. No, I can't get rid of it. There's also a little locating hole, so that couldn't spin around, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. I say a minute, because if I got this off in a minute, I'd be really happy. You can't see any glue as such. See if you can waggle it off a bit. Oh, I think it's moving. It's well fitted, give it that. Squirt some oil up it, maybe. Every time I keep thinking it moves, I look at the end and it hasn't moved whatsoever.
I'm doing the usual thing where we start off gentle and then get progressively more violent with it. Ooh, that definitely moved a bit. Oh yes, about three mil, eighth of an inch. Technically, the more comes off, the easier and easier it should get because there's less friction. Well, it is coming slowly. That's probably the best we can say. I am going to try a little bit of oil. So we're off about a quarter of an inch. If I put that up there, just spray a bit of penetrating oil. How badly can we ruin it? Oops. I was careful not to get any on my hands. Oh, look at this. Oh. Well, there we are. I'm glad I didn't struggle with that for half an hour now. And all it needed was the tiny spray of oil. Whoopee. Of course, that might mean that this grip will never stick again. So clutch perch is, looks like an eight millimeter bolt. Is this going to do that thing where I haven't got enough slack to get it off? Quite possibly. Nearly. There we go. Just the brake side. I mean, I say just the brake side, it's got more on it than the other side. So on this side, another switch gear and throttle, oh, and the end weight. Oh. 
We're all good. You obviously really didn't want these to come loose. Weight number two. Two screws, same as the other side. Um, yep. Long one at the front again. Is it the same as the other one? Yes. Just check, you can still see that. Okay, the top's come off, the bottom is still attached somehow or so it seems how is that still attached? more force required? Just a bit gummed up. Now the throttle tube should slide off. Okay, well I pulled it off the throttle cable. I didn't want to do that. But no damage done. Now, the reason that wouldn't come is because I was too impatient and the throttle switch gear obviously the front brake switch is there which is that sound that clicks when you brake and that's what turns your rear stoplight on it's a little bit corroded there let to give that a clean up And they should be pull off spade connections. I'm a bit worried they might pull off the entire switch connections because that's quite corroded. So I'm going to see if I can unscrew the switch. There's a little micro switch that works your brake, stoplight. Pop that screw in before I lose it. <laughs> Too late. It's okay, the towel caught it. So 
just the brake. And we're free of the standard bars. Come on. Okay, it's really fighting me. Because it's got two bolts this side. I really am rushing this week, honey. Slow down. Right. Dot it. it says a standard meteor bars. Quite a difference, eh? So they were in there and further forward. So they've come from here all the way down here. And I was saying about locking marks, as you can see these two holes here. That's what the switch gear locks into. So the switch gear doesn't depend on the friction of those screws to stop them turning around. So a decision has to be made on where that is. It's not too critical, because it's kind of it's kind of obvious where they point after all. Mm. So master cylinder. Throttle cable, switch gear, brake light switch, switch gear for this side, and there should be a clutch somewhere. There it is. And there's the little USB power supply. Lovely. Now I have to make that fit this. I'm thinking something will have to be undone because if it was a struggle to get them off those bars, these are wider, it'll be even more of a struggle. And I can already see that I've got no distance at all to get the brake master cylinder on. <laughs> you see there's a bit, quite a bit of white alloy corrosion in there. That's what's marked the bars already, but not where you can, <laughs> not where you can see it. Right, so, we move that over. You'll laugh if this doesn't even fit on now, won't you? It's all good, it's all good. Just loosen this a bit more. There's a leak in my roof and it's almost exactly where I'm standing, so it's got these little drops. I'll probably get up there and fix that. Right, so while I've got this pulled over, can I get the clutch on? Is it the clutch next? Yeah, it must be. I 
that's weird. Obviously, the cables are kind of <laughs> forcing the handlebars to be there because that's where it's expecting them to be. So we're going to have to force them where they don't want to be, which is down quite a bit lower. Slightly do those up. So you can see by this loop how much extra cable we've got that we don't really need. I don't think it's a problem. I could always loosen this brake union, but then I'll have to re bleed the brakes which isn't the end of the world, but we'll try not to do it unless we really need to. Actually, I hope these bars are long enough to fit everything on. Because there's the throttle tube at the end. Obviously, we haven't even got enough room for the switch gear yet. that little metal pin there that's the locking tooth that has to go in a hole in these bars but we'll sort of disregard that slightly for now and just put these on so we can get some rough positioning has to be on there first. It's basically that little that little piece has to go into the throttle tube. Could come around this side for a better view. All you got on the switch gear is there's the brake light switch. There's the locating peg. And that's the throttle cable pull, which has to fit into that cutout. It's not difficult, but it's a bit fiddly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the throttle cable. Obviously, the spring is wanting to pull it back because that's what pulls the throttle back after you've operated it. <laughs> Little git. I have to take these gloves off. If I 
turn the throttle quadrant under here, it should make that job a lot easier. Okay, so there's that cutout. Oh, you little get. Players. Got it. So that slides in there, and that cable is going to lay in this trough now. When I let go of it, there we go. That's going to turn, oh, that has to go under there. There you go. And when you turn the throttle, that pulls that cable, turns the quadrant that end, and there's your revs. We're almost to the point where this brake is going to want to start going around this curve. And we don't want that. Because then It'll upset the placement of everything. So we've just got away with that. Right, so that brake has to go there. Let's tighten that up. Okay, so we didn't have any more room whatsoever to move that back. I'm surprised at that because the bars were sort of were wider. But of course, this bend isn't as severe, so the control area must be shorter than the original bars. And we're just flush at the end there. Now. What's going to happen when we turn the bars? That is the question. Can you see what's going to happen? No, let's pull you back a bit. So here we go. How much trouble are we in? What's going to hit first? The cable's hitting, but that's, I don't, I'm not worried about that. Ooh, I think we've got away with it. I've got about a quarter of an inch here. And that'll get smaller because we haven't locked this in place. So the cables are touching. But yeah. Look at that. Quarter of an inch clearance. What about the other side? I'd hope the other side would be the same or better. Okay, so clutch perch and I'm guessing this will have to go right up there as well. I don't go too far because this looks quite easy to scratch and this metal is very sharp. This went underneath. This went underneath. Do 
very classy these Royal Enfields, usually there's no integration at all between this assembly and the switch gear but they've actually, this, ca this casting is curved and there's also a matching indent on the plastic switch gear so that not just two random things that move independently that, that, that is meant to go and lock just like that into there. Lots of lovely thought and design goes into these. I'm very impressed. There's our oily. Mr. Oily. I won't slow it on yet because it hasn't dried out yet. Okay, another half inch. Like the other side, really. There we go. They used to make ratchets with little thumb wheels on top. So when you didn't have enough tension to use the ratcheting action, you could spin them around. Helpful stuff that you don't see anymore. Or perhaps you don't see it on the cheap tools that you buy. So here it comes. Here you go, hard against the stop. I've still got quarter of an inch clearance there. I'll see the cables hitting it, but we'll, um, we'll tie that out of the way, don't worry. Very impressive. I'll take measurements of these bars in case you're curious about what made it, and I'll try and put a link into where I bought them as well. Okay, it's time to mount these for real. I just thought I'd zoom in to show you what I mean by those cutouts. See that cutout there? And that projection on the casting. Look, that's designed to perfectly fit in there. There's still adjustment. That's the same both sides. Look at that design. We're meant to work together. What I need to do is that mounting stud, which I showed you earlier, I didn't pull off now because that cable will come off again. That mounting stud is under there. So I just need to mark the bar somehow and drill it. Obviously it's gonna be almost impossible to measure. So I'm gonna put some tape around it and then give the tape a good squeeze, well, the bar a good squeeze. And hopefully leave a mark in the tape where it's going to drill. So I've already set that where I want it. That's flush with the back. Moulding. Okay, that's lined up as much as I can. I'm gonna give it a good squeeze. Hopefully. Okay, so the cable did come out, never mind. That's left a mark underneath. Okay, that's the view underneath. That's the mark just there. So I just need to drill a hole big enough for that. Stud to fit in. Obviously, I'm worried about making it too big and then having it flopping around. Oh, 
Aha. There it is. If you bring this back. that moulding into there. Right. Oh my god, I can't reach the screws. <laughs> the screws are all the way over there. Hang on, I can, there's one in here. So onto this side, the peg's in a completely different place this side. There we go, uh, long one at the front. That was a lot easier. But then as we've found, it's always easier the second time. Okay, Let's make this match up. glue for this grip but for now I will just settle with cleaning it out and pushing it on well, I might just push it on for now let's leave that like that for now and then let's have a look, see if it still misses the tank. There you go, check it out. Let's have a turn test. Should have done that a bit slower, shouldn't I? So there's not enough room ow, ow, to get my finger under. I mean, you've got small fingers. But there's about six mil, quarter of an inch. Great. And same that side. Brilliant, I think we're really lucky there because I thought we were going to need risers. And so we could have either, if that had hit the tank, we could have put risers under here. We could have turned that whole riser the other way, which would have pushed the bars further away. We could have rotated the whole bars further. Or that. There is another thing I thought about, which I'm going to show you now. If I get the GoPro down in here, down in the bike, you'll see these two 
well this bit of metal on the frame and this bit of metal which is on the bottom yoke and as the bars turn that bit of metal hitting the other bit of metal is what gives the handlebars their limit So the middle bit's on the frame, and this chunk is on the bottom yoke, or triple tree, I think Americans call them, but yokes in the UK. And my plan was to drill and tap a little bolt in there, and by turning that bolt, it would have restricted how far the handlebars could turn. And that was going to be my ultimate backup plan if the bars hit the tank but they just didn't so we don't need it and it's a common call common reason for um writing off a motorbike in the uk because uh, these stops are checked in the annual government inspection and if any part of the handlebars hit the bike it'll fail and cause it's usually the frame that's damaged it's a write-off, but you'll have to be in a pretty nasty accident to damage your frame stops. But not, you know, not really bad. So bits of bikes mustn't hit other bits, or it's bad. We're not in trouble at all. Flat bars, well, almost flat. A little bit of paint required here. And also when I do the final finishing, where it was damaged when it was stolen, I need to paint the top yoke anyway. There's caps on the top of the forks. I've heard it said they're for protecting it during transit, but I don't quite buy that because no other motorbike does that. And these are made slightly too well to do that. I think it's just because these are so shiny. I think they're just, we're a distraction. The final finish, they just really stand out too much. So they come up with these caps to cover them up. Doesn't mean you can't take them off, of course. Pass them more suited if you've got one of the Supernovas, shiny bikes. One is mostly black like this. I think that's better. Although if I'd lost one, I'm sure I'd be saying different so that I could get away with only having none. So let's get a side view with sitting on it. Well, there we go. Hope you enjoyed that this week. I'm really surprised by how well the bars fitted. Everything I'd found on the internet was telling me that I'd need risers to make lower bars fit. But as you saw, they just went straight on. So that was quite a win. So I hope you like those. It definitely feels a lot more aggressive, but not too aggressive. Not so much that it's uncomfortable. It's obviously not as comfortable as it was because Meteors were really comfortable bikes. But um, it looks kind of badass, so I'm inclined to just be a bit uncomfortable to live with it. Although I could still get risers if it gets too much. Or perhaps ones with a lesser rise. So next week, I've got a few things. As you recall, I've got a bent clutch lever. And I got these off a nice gentleman on eBay. Not only are they straight, they're also black. So that's going to look really good. They're in top condition. So I'm really pleased with that. And remember these? We'll be putting these on the bike.
was the gaiters and also I saw these cutesy little far end mirrors because I don't want the big mirrors sticking up off the handlebars. And I haven't gone with round, I've gone with these sort of this shape. So they're quite low profile, but with a bit of width. So I don't know if they'll be sort of in, out, upside down, upside down, right way up. Obviously there's four different ways that could go. That way, that way, that way. But, so next time, we'll look at the front and we'll do some tidying up on this mud guard as well. So, all this lovely stuff. So we'll have a look around at this now to sum up our day. And uh, I'll see you next time. And we'll uh, get it on. See ya. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you want to see what happens next.